This episode of the 5 Plus 8 Show is brought to you by Renters Legal Liability, LLC. RLL, Rethinking Risk. A property owner should be able to fully focus on their business. The unintended consequences of an uninsured resident causing catastrophic damage is a stark reality. RLL protects property owners from residents' negligent acts, saving them millions of dollars. RLL, they're our client. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just kick this off. Yeah. Uh, this good. is the episode one of the 5 Plus 8 show. Uh, it is going to seek to share stories of success and failure and have fun doing it. Okay. And uh, we've got our whole team here in the studio, which is also our conference room and our and our foyer. And uh, yeah, this is the 5 Plus 8 show. I'm Adam <laughs> Faust, uh, one of the partners of 5 Plus 8. I'd like to introduce my partner... Jeff Long. I'm one of the other partners of the company. And uh, yeah, let's do this thing. Okay. So as our first subject, uh, we are going, we wanted to talk about how to not start an agency. Jeff and I started 5 Plus 8 almost exactly seven years ago. Uh, next month will be seven years since we started 5 Plus 8 in 2013. And we feel like we have some uh, opportunities to share the stories of the success and failure for anyone who is in the midst of starting an agency or is thinking about doing it or doesn't know if freelance is, um, you know, what they want to be or if they want to go full time or, you know, all that good stuff. Um, so I I guess to get into it, the first question is, do you need money? Uh, our answer to that would be no, because we didn't have any. No, had about (laughs) $2,000. So. Yeah, I actually, I actually uh, uh, miscalculated um, and thought about pay periods versus months and thought I had three months saved, but I had three pay periods saved. <laughs> and that was uh, a, a huge mistake. Um, so you don't need money. We did not borrow any money. We did not have any rich investors. We are not, as Jeff likes to put it, independently wealthy. Right. Uh, we still aren't. Uh, but we, uh, yeah, so we did that. And uh, you don't need money. You don't need um, any investors. You can get investors, of course, but obviously the risk there is then you got to pay those people back. And right. they kind of have you, <clears throat> I mean, they kind of have you. Uh, we got a call coming in? Yeah. Okay, we got a call coming in. Hey, Gouda, take that call. Gouda's going to take a call coming in. It might not be for the show, but we hope it is. Gouda? Whoa! Oh, Matt! Matt on the mobile. Uh, <laughs> oh! What uh? What, what part of town are you in, Matt? Thanks, Matt. Uh, please uh, don't be a stranger. Uh, that was Matt. Uh, he uh, is in is in Houston, uh, and he asked for the people on Instagram Live. How many people got there, Harper? Uh, we got six people. Six people. So we right. doubled our yeah. It's okay. First five minutes. For so people who couldn't hear Matt's question, Matt said, uh, how do you deal with contracts? He believes a uh, word is bond, and it's uh, his word is as strong as oak, uh, a quote from Jerry Maguire. Uh, we, Jeff, you want to take this one? We have contracts with clients, Mm -hmm. but what we've learned from the past is a contract is, is, is basically a contract. Your word in the relationship is the most important thing. Contract to us is, is, is important, but when it comes down to it, it's more or less a, a piece of paper. So relationships and honoring your word and doing what you say you're going to do is what really matters. Yeah, it's, that's exactly right. Um, I mean, most of the clients that we work with and most of the clients you're going to work with when you have an agency are probably going to have more money and more lawyers than you do. And if they want to get out of the contract, they probably can. Um, And and in reality, if you've got a client who wants to get out of a contract, what are you going to do? You're going to try to keep them in the contract? You think that's going to be a really good relationship? So uh, we do have contracts. They are nice, especially as the team grows. We've got a team of, of nine people now, so we do have to have securities in place and, and know that we're committed to certain things, uh, of course, long term. But in reality, if a client doesn't want to work with you, they're going to, they're not going to work with you. And also, you're not going to want to work with them either. So if you do what you say you're going to do, 
um, and and you honor all the things you said you were going to do, you're, you're probably going to be fine. And I think that's that's probably the key more so than than focusing on airtight contracts. I agree. That's a great question. Thanks for Matt on the mobile. That was fantastic. <laughs> I hope that happens more. Often. Okay. Um, so yeah, money, I think is where we left it off. Uh, uh, I think, yeah, it's great to have, if you've got money, you should use it and you should save money. We probably should have saved more money. Right. A but, lot more money. Yeah. <laughs> agree. Agreed. But, but there's also like a, a hot time to just go and do it too. Mm-hmm. And, and you may not have another year to save the money. The, the, your enthusiasm or, or, or your will to do it might be gone by then, or you might be stuck in a place you don't want to be for another year. I think that's so. Yeah. I, I think you've got to just you've got to trust your gut and just do it. And and when we started this, we started it with the idea that we it was going to be impossible to fail because <laughs> yes, we did. It, we it had to work because there was no money. There was so, no money. There's no backup plan. And I remember. Uh, it hitting me so hard because my uh, my wife got pregnant uh, or we got whatever as she or for our first baby and I felt like once that baby came came like came out I was gonna I would never have the guts to do it because then I would have the 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 fear and the responsibility of a child so it was almost like a race against time I didn't I knew I didn't know what I didn't know because. I didn't know what it was like to have a kid. So I knew as soon as I did find out what it was like to have a kid, I was going to be scared. So sometimes you have to kind of, you see that, you see that finish line ahead and you think, oh man, I'm going to buy a house or I'm going to have a kid or you know, have this, this bill. So if you, you kind of have to do, you have to strike with the opportunity when you can, because you might chicken out in six months and 12 months because something happens. And so you kind of have to go for it when you, when you're, when you're feeling it. Yeah. And I think that when you, uh, I'm a firm believer that if if you uh, if you're good at what you do, mm-hmm. um, and you've got good people around you, you you won't fail. Yeah, you won't. Yeah, you, yeah. If you're yeah, if you're passionate about what you what if you're severely passionate about it, and you you basically have your heart set on it, I, I think that you can be successful in in just about anything. Um, and it's really more about. Well, I'll get we'll get to that later. Number two uh, question we have: How many viewers we got on the Instagram Live, Harper? Six. Okay. All so right. They're staying steady. Okay. Okay. But that's we, cool. it, it, <laughs> Oh, okay. I know who that is. I like that. That's Sarah's boyfriend. Oh, fiance. Yeah, this is, yeah, yeah, yeah that's your fiance. Our, our, our art director, Sarah Hudson. Shout out to Sarah Hudson. She just got engaged. Sarah? Shout out to Sarah. <laughs> yeah, Sarah doesn't like to be on camera. Um, uh, do you need, number two, do you need clients? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people, when they start uh, start something like this, they, they leave an agency uh, and they try to take one or two clients with them, um, which, you know, it can be kind of risky. You can burn some bridges. Um, thanks, Adrian. Adrian's going to snag that call. Uh, and, and, but we did. Jeff and I are, were older guys. <clears throat> uh, not older, but, you know, we had established a, a bunch of freelancers. Uh, I mean, as freelancers, we established a bunch of freelance projects. And uh, and basically went into it like that, and and took those freelance projects and you know uh, made them our, our our initial clients. Even though it wasn't much money, it was enough to kind of keep the doors open, or yeah. not, keep, not keep the doors open because obviously we worked at home in the beginning. So I, I don't think that you need to go into it with some huge client. It's obviously great if you can, but if you can scrounge up enough website projects, enough you know invitations, uh, I think you know your best clients. Your best clients are going to be your friends and family. And too many people try to get fancy and think they're going to cold call their way or, or network their way into all these big clients. But in reality, you need your mom and your uncle and your friend from high school. And you need everybody who would possibly give you work to know what you're doing and to give you work. And you need to get real humble about that and not think that you're, you know, you're going to come in and, and, and get you know, Shiner as your first client. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, I think that's, uh, that, that's the big thing is, is, is don't, don't think that anybody cares that you exist. 
I don't think that anybody's watching or waiting or, you know, really worried about you. You need to email, you need to call, you need to tell them you are open for business and you will do anything and you need to scratch and claw um, for what you can get. Which brings us to our, our third question. Do you need to niche? Which is a big question. A lot of people talk about niching down, being the, the hotel agency, being the, uh, the content uh, agency for dentists. And I think there's probably a ton of value in doing that. It's probably really smart. Everything I've read about it says you should do it. But we, we didn't. No, and I, I, from, a, from a creative standpoint, is a... Is a art director like I've always been, I wouldn't want to niche down because that is, it just, it's not as exciting. Mm -hmm. there, there's no way I could niche down and just become the hotel guy or the, mm -hmm. or the, or the medical industry guy. Mm -hmm. it, it, I think it's important for our agency to have a variety of projects and a variety of clients from, from really fun things to quite frankly, some boring things and, 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 and do a really good job with all of that. Yeah, I always talk about, um, this is a good time to, to get a word from our sponsor. This episode is sponsored by RLL, Renters Legal Liability, who's one of our clients. Uh, they do insurance. It is not renter's insurance. It's insurance for people who are property owners who need to ensure that they're Tenants do not light their apartment on fire, flood their apartment, do anything to their apartment. Uh, they are covered even if they don't have renter's insurance. They're covered by the property owners, and uh, so that's this is sponsored by all of our clients. And this sex segment is sponsored by RLL, and it's a great point because RLL is not on the on the not the kind of client you think sounds super sexy or cool or craft beer or anything like that, but they are absolutely one of the most fun clients to work with. I'm not just saying that they trust us. They let us do what they, we think that needs to be done. And, and that's not just us because Jeff and I were talking about this yesterday. The best advertising being done right now is by, by insurance, insurance companies. Yeah. I, I, I would say so from, from all state to Geico to everyone. And, and it, it's really interesting to me because those guys will run five and six campaigns at once. Mm -hmm. And, and for, for every different business vertical they have, they've got a different campaign for each one and they always entertain me. It's always funny. Yeah, they, they, they really do. Um, you've got Geico progressive state farm farmers, all state and all, when I said all five of those, you probably can think of some of their commercials from Mayhem to uh, Aaron Rodgers to um, obviously all the, the 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 major ones. Flow yeah, the, and, the, uh, the the new the new Geico ad for Lonnie's Lumberyard. If if you want, uh, that's a good one. Wood, we're better than good. Um, that that's a great I mean, they, <laughs> great they, ad. They, the Geico's turned their commercials into into movies i mean now they have this whole sequel because their commercials are so good they're coming back out with their old commercials right that's how entertaining they are so you can't i guess the point is you can't when it comes to niching down you can't blame the the client or the industry for being boring um or not being exciting or cool like you think it is it's as cool as you make it and it's as smart as you make it so it's really not about the industry so i think if you're going to be the you know if you want to niche down i think that you should do that and you should investigate that we didn't because it didn't it didn't excite us and i think that's really what it comes down to there's no trend to follow um i mean there's there's plenty of trends to follow but don't follow trends because when you do you might end up doing something you don't like and if you don't like doing it you're going to do a crappy job at it this segment's called sharon with, with chew with, with sharon, sharon chew. chew hey sharon hey hey uh sharon sharon chew is a designer here at five plus eight and a wonderful person and we are going to have her on for short segments where she is going to share something from her, her life. life yeah yeah uh so sharon yes what do you have to share with <laughs> the audience <laughs> um earl gray tea is really good earl gray tea yeah did you know black tea has more caffeine than green tea i did not i thought green tea had more but I trust you. We might need Sarah to fact check this. Okay. What else do you know about tea? 
Um, matcha is made from a whole leaf, whereas other teas are just steeped. Interesting. Uh. They like grind the whole tea leaf. The and is the leaf the matcha a matcha powder. leaf? Good question. Sarah? <laughs> How often do you drink tea, Sharon? Mm, average four times a week. Four times a right. week. So not every like day. Like one cup. Yeah. One cup. <clears throat> four four cups a week. Four cups a week? So yeah, where how, how do you how do you get there? It's not you don't wake up do you wake up in the morning and have coffee? That's a good question. A better um, question. No. So do you drink coffee at all? Sometimes. If it's like I re- I'm really tired and I really need coffee. Okay. So how often do you drink coffee? Um three times a week. Okay, so so you're kind of a you're kind of a split. Yeah. I don't think that's common. Oh, really? No, I feel like most people are, are coffee or tea people. What do you think, Joe? Uh, I think you're right. I, yeah, I mean, most people are daily coffee drinkers or or the other. I think a good. I think an interesting question. I should stop saying my own questions are interesting. <laughs> I did that. It's the second time I've done that. But I I do think my questions are interesting. <laughs> Jeff, do you drink coffee? Uh. It, it, only uh, only when I need a, a boost in the morning. I'm not uh, like a habitual coffee drinker. How often do you drink coffee? Uh, I, this week, I think I drink coffee three mornings. I um, drink I drink two two to three cups every day. That's a lot. Is it, is it too much? I had someone else react that way. Sharon Chu just gave me a face. Yeah, that's a lot. I used to drink um, two Vietnamese coffees Ooh, a day. Those are wicked strong. <laughs> those are strong. Those are super strong. And don't strong. they have a bunch of, sh- are those ones that have a bunch of sugar in them? Yeah, condensed milk. Oh, my, oh the condensed milk. Yeah, that's like. That's so good. It's really bad for you. Yeah. Well, I think we all learned something here. Yeah. Yeah, Sharon Chu, uh, Sharon with Chu uh, taught us that she, that Earl Grey, what? Black tea Black has. Black tea has more caffeine than green tea. Green tea. That is true. It's true. Okay, and, true. And and she <laughs> shared with us that she will drink tea maybe four times a week. This this reminds One me. Cup. This reminds me of the old uh, SNL um, segment with the NPR because <laughs> she's so like uh, calm uh-huh. and like it's like that. Remember the old NPR one yeah. where they'd be like, "This is they were like a uh, delicious dish." They would just like whisper, "No, I'm not, I'm not old." Anyway, it was funny. Uh, thanks, Sharon. Yeah, thanks. thanks a lot. Thanks yeah. for having me. Yeah, we'll see you next week. All right. Any questions coming in, Harper? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, who, who dropped off? Was it Hustletown? <laughs> yeah, it's true. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, people inside this office have been dropping. Uh, we have started <laughs> We started with uh, two more viewers than we have now. Um but thanks to Katie and Sharon, to, and Sharon started working at our laptop. Yeah. We need to liven the show up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got six. Okay, okay. Well, it's the first show. It's 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 the first show. You know, we're gonna learn a lot. I think it's gonna be painful to watch ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, number four. Uh, do you need an office? What do you think, Jeff? Not at first. No. It, it's an unneeded expense at first, honestly. But what happens when you get that first big client and they want to meet you at your office? Well, then you you you, you got to figure that situation out. Um, you know, there there there's office space that you can that that you can use. You know, like by an hourly rate. There's options like that, like WeWork and and things like that type of scenario. Um, but up front, right when you start, there's no need for an office. You need to concentrate on on paying yourself and, and whoever else you have around you. And an office is kind of an unneeded expense, I think. Yeah. I mean, but we got an office sooner than we got an office sooner than I think either of us would have expected. We got an yeah. office within six months of starting. Yeah, that's true. But that's because we got a client and we needed to yeah. be able to meet them there. And even though, but you know, it's not, it's also not, sometimes people get too fancy and they think that they need to get, um, you know, some big expensive thing and build it all out. I mean, our first office, the rent was $600 a month. It was basically one room. And it's in the middle. Of, <laughs> and it was in the middle of the city. I mean, uh, we're in Houston and it was in the middle of the city. Um, so it's a great location. It was small, but it was there and we had an address and we felt official. So um, you don't have to be fancy. You don't have to spend a bunch of money. You know, we had a couple of desks from Ikea and, uh, and, we, and then we've just slowly, slowly built up. 
um, and never gotten too far because, you know, there's so many ups and downs in, in this, in this world. You don't want to, you want to be kind of bursting at the seams before you expand. Yeah, I, I agree. You know, yeah. because there's nothing sad. You ever been in an office, you ever been in an office where it's empty? It's depressing. Yeah. You know, it's something feels like it's wrong. You know, when there's an, when you, when you're in an office building, um, and there's empty desks and there's empty rooms and there's big, long hallways. It's kind of sad. It's kind of like, Oh, something, something went wrong here. It's also sad too. when you see a new agency start up and their office is super nice. And then a year from yeah. that day they're gone. Yeah. I think that's probably the, I think the biggest key to success and, and, and not that we're any sort of success by any means, but you know, I think in the seven years, the one one thing I would say is one of the biggest drivers to success that people talk about the least is stamina and and grit and just sticking it out. Because since we started there, we have seen a lot of other agencies our size start and end in that short seven year span. And you know all the statistics about, you know, in the first year businesses, you know, whatever. I'm not going to pretend to know these stats, but you've heard all the kind of sad stats about small businesses starting and what they do within the first, you know, year and two years. And by the, you know, by 10 years, you know, only like 15% or some number are still in existence. And I don't think it's because we're any smarter or the people who succeed are any smarter or better or work any harder. I think they've just gut it out and gut it through the hard times and just don't close up shop. Um, because there's plenty of times when you think you need to and they're scared and it, there's an easy way out and, and you take it. Um, and I think that ultimately you really, really regret it if it, if it was your dream. Yeah, absolutely. So we're coming in on 20 minutes, which is crazy. This is flown by. Uh, Harper, any more questions coming in? Uh, Do we flash the number? Oh, have we put the number up? Let's do it. Put the phone number in there. Put the phone number in there. They're, 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 you know, it, now, it, it, it's right always now. the right time to call out, too. Oh, we could call out. You know? Can we call out? Yeah. We can call people? We could. You want me to Any, anybody we want to talk to? Well, well, let's put, hey, Harper, just put Gabe's number in the uh, in the Instagram Live and see who, who we who. Oh, you were going to write it down and show oh, it. Just flash screen. it on the screen? No, type it in. <laughs> yeah, type it in. We want to take some calls. Uh, and before we do take any calls, uh, we want to, um, we're going to, so we're going to cut this up and it's going to be on YouTube. It's going to be a little bit different. We're going to have some different segments. Um, so should I like do like a, like a toss? What does that mean? It's like when you're like, Hey, we're going to, we're going to, uh, toss to the segment sharing with you. Yeah. We, yeah. Or do we have, do, I guess we could just voice over that later. Or take, I, I, take a break. I think we, I think we, I think we just toss it. Okay. Uh, we're going to toss it to Sharon with you. <laughs> <laughs> Sharon just ran out of the room. All right. All right. Um, la- last question. It's a great we have, segment. La- last, last question we have written down to, to, to discuss is uh, what do I do first? If you're thinking about starting an agency or you're thinking about going from freelance to making it official, what's the first thing you should do? Is it, is it, you know, get an LLC? Is it, um, is it, uh, you know, and, and this is after the decisions were made. Yeah. Is, is it, you know, you know, the one thing I def we definitely didn't do. So I, I remember we wrote a business, you know, a lot of people say write a business plan. I, I started a business plan. I got about 50% of the way through it and then got, got bored and stopped. I definitely think the one thing that we didn't do that we should have done more of is just read some books, listen to some, yeah. listen to some <clears throat> things. Uh, there's a, I mean, more now than more in, so now than ever, there are so many books, audiobooks, podcasts out there. I mean, do your research, listen to things, um, listen to a lot of different things. Uh, there's, there's, you know, the E myth is a great like foundational thing, which is about the entrepreneurial myth. It's a great way to start um, learning about, you know, if if you have, you know, if you've got the right plan in place. Um, but I think, yeah, I think that I think one main thing is I would have done, I would have done more research in the front end and realized that just because you're good at design or web development or uh, whatever it is, does not mean that you're ready to start a business doing it. Right. Um, one, one thing that, uh, well, first of all, I agree with that. We did not do that. Um, it, it, it would have been helpful. 
one one thing that we did do that you probably shouldn't do that I'm still somewhat proud of that when, when we started is that when we built our website, we launched it upside down. That's, that, right. that's a counterintuitive move. You wouldn't have seen that coming. No one saw it coming. And uh, we left it that way for a couple of days. Um, I'm not really sure why we did that, but I'm yeah. kind of proud of it for it, some reason. My wife did not like that idea. No. She <laughs> thought it was a... Oh, we got a call coming in? Yeah, we do. <laughs> uh, looks like we got Katie Holton on the line. Long time five plus eight employee. Oh, wow. Um, did not see that coming. Katie, patching you in. Say that again. Okay. What do you, we're gonna we're gonna bring in a second caller. We're gonna have two calls. Um, we've also got Paulina Papke on the line. Okay, um, ex, all right. X five plus eight employee, current freelancer. Um, no, no, no. She's got a job. She's got a job as well. Sorry, I don't mean to to speak. Paulina, you online? Paulina. Hey, Paulina, you're live with the guys. Yeah. Hey, how are you? Hey, Paulina. Good. We've also got Katie on the line. We've got Katie Holton on the line as well, Paulina. Go for it. <laughs> why, why? You, you, you don't want to do why, well. Why would you want to do a bad job, Paulina? Uh, yeah. Okay. I think, I think that's great, Pauline. That, uh, that's great. Thank you. Uh, it's not how to not start a company. It's, uh, all the things you don't want to do when you start a company. So, so, so to your, so to your point, Pauline, the, the, uh, an easy way to wreck your company or, or your freelance business would be to sign on to a job. Mm -hmm accept half the payment, yes. then do nothing and yeah. disappear. Yeah, disappear. I think that would probably yeah. set you off on the wrong track. Yeah. I think you can too, Paulina. I think... As, as as you know, Paulina, I like to read a lot of a lot of books about business leadership, all that stuff. And there's a ton out there. Um, I think that probably my favorite person, though, and I you could read any of his books is Seth Godin. Uh, he has like um, Purple Cow and Small is the New Big, and I mean really anything from him because. He talks all almost exclusively about the why, you know, why you're doing it and who you're doing it for. His big line that he says over and over and over again is uh, people like this, people like us do things like this. And I think what what that what that's all about is finding your audience. And that's probably a good way to you know, start a company is, does anybody want this, what you're offering? Does anybody need this? And what kind of person would want this and need this? And in reality, I mean, you think you need thousands and thousands of people to care and customers and things like that. But I mean, when we look at five plus eight, seven years in, I mean, we have about 20 current clients and that's, that's not very many. So you don't need so many clients. You need clients who really, really care about what you do. And, and all right, what kind of work do you do, Paulina? What kind of work do you do, Paulina? I know that. Interesting. Well, I just, you know, the best, the best customers you're going to find, um, 
are going to be from referrals, as you know. And if you do a great job for your current customers, they're going to refer you to like-minded people. And that's really the best thing you can possibly do is do a great... The best new business you can do is doing a great job for your current customers. Thanks for the call, Paulina. <laughs> I forget, we still got Katie on the Katie? No, we don't no, care. She dropped off. Hey, Griff. <laughs> How many followers do we have right now? Four. Four. Okay. Four. Well, all right. It's actually, you know what? That's a, that's all the time we have for today.